So this was going to be yesterday's vlog, and obviously it's uploading today. Um, but I feel like it's necessary to bring this up, because it comes up too many times in circles which are allegedly supposed to be alternatives to Republicans. Gun control. How on earth is that proletarian? How does that help the worker? Well, they claim that, like, it's supposed to uh, eliminate crime or, you know, reduce the instances of fatalities. But first off, they don't have a stable path forward to that future um, from a perspective that doesn't involve creating a black market in a country where gun manufacture and ownership still exists and is massively, massively um, increased and influenced by the military, uh, prison, and uh, intelligence industrial complexes, all of them needing uh, their own weapons. Hey, even the IRS needs weapons. They need, um, they need like, what is it, like 5 million plus rounds of ammunition? 500? I, I don't remember. It was 5 something million rounds of ammunition because they're authorized to use deadly force um not all of them of course you know like the the filing clerk uh isn't authorized to be on the irs swat team but the fact that irs has what amounts to a swat team in general is a huge fucking problem um especially considering the fact that uh there are more laws on the books than ever uh, and an increasingly uh, high amount of reasons to not tell the government everything. Because telling them everything is a really good way to be, like, regulated into oblivion. I saw this, um, I don't know, he was certainly, like, trying to live low technology. But, like, either way, he was like this farmer. And these people were coming to his fucking property to audit it. To like, to like, they, they had a warrant from a judge that said that they could, uh, th that they could inspect the property. And he had his lawyer look over it and said that, like, basically, you can't prove that there's anything on here that says I have to actually unlock the joint. So he just sat outside it with, uh, with the doors locked. And, uh, and this woman, uh, kept on trying to weasel her way into it eventually demanding a private conversation. Um, and then he said if it would be off the record, sure. <laughs> but she walked away after that. She wanted an on-the-record confession of something or other pulled out of him in order to justify breaking in when there wasn't a reason before and when the warrant didn't include an authorization for that kind of force, which is why the lawyer would, you know, tell this guy to say... Hey, yeah, don't fuck with my shit. Door's locked. Don't come in. So, I think it's worth bringing up. I think it's worth bringing up that poor people and people who are the most at risk of, you know, oppression might have the most reason to arm up. If you know for a fact that you're going to be robbed, it's a good idea to have something there in order to stop the robbers. Robbers would love you to uh, not have that sort of thing. It makes it really, really easy. Because they can have those things. They don't give a fuck. And then they can come into your house um, and take what they want. Because... They have the force differential. They have the advantage. This is the same thing with any other crime. You know, fucking rape, murder. You have a lot higher likelihood of having that happen to you if you don't have the same means they do to commit violence. And that really is it. It's just about who can commit violence. So, 
let's be super clear here and say that it's about violence differentials. The reason anybody owns a gun uh, or, you know, possesses one, uses one, is to have the upper hand or at least an equalizing opportunity in a situation of violence. That's it. So, when you have one, you can commit violence in self-defense. You can commit violence in defense of others. There are completely legitimate uses of force. And if there weren't, then the government would have precisely zero grounds to stand on to say that cops should be armed, or that they should be able to use force at all. Because why should they be allowed to use force if that sort of force differential is inherently wrong? They're just people. They're not different. They put on a costume. That's all. They put on a costume. They signed a piece of paper that said that wearing that costume or not wearing that costume in some cases, basically, it's, it's, it's like, it's like a bad parent. You don't have a reason for saying that this person has anything that anybody else doesn't. It's because I said so. And if you don't like it, going to your room will be the least of your worries. So just comply, and nobody gets hurt. That's a bad parent, but it's considered a standard government. So, they want that force differential to benefit them, because otherwise it's much harder to force you to do what they want. So how does the proletariat, how does the worker, how does the common person benefit from prohibition of guns? I mean, prohibition of drugs, you can at least say that you're doing it for their protection so that they don't ingest something awful, right? Because drugs are just awful all the time and there's no medicinal benefit despite the fact that Bayer was using coke, heroin, and meth in their cough syrup a really long time ago and despite the fact that cocaine is still used in nasal packs and other sorts of wound packs to stem bleeding and the fact that heroin is available in legally pharmaceutical grade uh, proportions and so is meth and man it's almost like that's also designed to get a monopoly on something or other so that they're the only ones who are legitimately allowed to do x y and z fuck damn couldn't be um but the thing that they're allowed to do that you're not in terms of guns is clear the whole point of law enforcement, um, troops, anything like that, is to be able to force the will of the government on a region and on a people. Whether that will be reasonable or not is up for fucking debate, but I think it's pretty universally unreasonable personally because government obtains what they have unethically. They rely on theft, they rely on, you know, organized extortion and shit like that, and maybe they shouldn't be the ethical arbiters here with the monopoly on jack-fucking-shit! Just a thought. Um, but, you know, just steel-manning the position here, let's say cops uh, are of a greater moral fiber, despite the 40% of them who regularly commit domestic violence or the fact that <laughs> they have escalatory training from literal troops or <laughs> the fact that, you know, uh, they regularly turn off their body cams or you know, just, we'll, we'll ignore all that. Let's just say they are of a higher moral fiber. Um, you know, maybe uh, they shouldn't be taking the guns away from the common person who might also have a similar moral fiber, right? Because maybe 
the real moral decision to make would be that the common person have the ability to defend themselves before a cop needs to put their life on the line. They're obviously angelic and pure life on the line. Or maybe cops are just smarter than us, despite the Supreme Court okaying the idea of IQ thresholds um, and limits for cops. You know, despite them... Um, <laughs> despite them consistently resorting to, like, no IQ required measures like violence to begin with, despite, despite all that, you know, uh, let's just say they're smarter than us. Why shouldn't we be allowed to use a thing that they're oh so smart with instead of just learn from them? Why are they hoarding this secret knowledge of how to be a low IQ uh, enforcer of the government's edicts? It don't make much sense to me. So, I don't agree. I don't agree that the state is a higher moral fiber in the agency of cops. So what about troops, right? What about troops? Troops are the people that it's universally considered acceptable to arm. Well, that brings up an interesting dichotomy. Because statists in favor of gun control constantly propose things like raising the age limit to 21. Because guns are a weapon of war. These weapons of war shouldn't just be handed out to somebody who just graduated high school as they wax morally indignant. Right? But that sort of fades when you realize that the state, when they made the original designs for many of these weapons and commissioned them uh, for use in war, were doing that when the common person was being drafted for their conflicts at the ripe young age of 18. So which was it? Was it made for those wars, or was it made for some higher caste than those wars? Should they not have been given to those 18-year-olds? Should they not have been trained uh, to do that sort of thing when they were 18? Oh, but that doesn't count. The draft was involuntary. Well, okay. So let's say there's no draft. 18, year, 18 years old is the age when we should start to restrict their adult gun ownership? Why? If 18 years old can volunteer for the military and get that sort of training to go shoot people who they don't understand why because they're following orders... Why can't they do it for reasons they do understand? Like, this bitch is breaking into my fucking house. This motherfucker is trying to kidnap a relative so he can rape her. Or, you know, this motherfucker is trying to uh, murder me and my friends. Why is it more acceptable to shoot on behalf of the government as a cop or a troop, than it is as the same age, the same kind of person as that totally irresponsible person you don't think should be armed. See, then it really becomes obvious that it's not actually a matter of raising it to a reasonable age. It's a matter of, we want to control people, and we want to incrementally destroy legal gun ownership so that we'll have more to criminalize so that we'll have more to send our police after so that we'll have m less resistance to our wars so that we can have more people involved because that's the only way they can shoot etc 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 it's a snowballing effect and what the fuck does this do it creates black fucking markets because if I gotta go meet my homie down by the corner in order to get jack fucking shit anymore, then maybe I'm gonna go there and do that. And maybe that 
is a problem because the more things you prohibit, the more of those people are going to exist on the more street corners. And, and you know, that's the stereotype, right? My homie. We don't think of white people. There's a funny reason for that. It's because a lot of gun control and crime shit is soaked in racism. And maybe the NRA pushing a bunch of gun control legislation like they absolutely fucking did and Republicans backing this sort of thing was because they like that racism. Because it helps them push their own kinds of society. Maybe that's why Huey Newton and Malcolm X both understood that you need to be fucking armed. And maybe that's why anti-capitalists are always somehow okay with guns. At least the ones who have any sort of liberatory fancy at all. The ones who don't, the authoritarians, are still totally okay with disarming people because they want those people to be forced into their communal idea. But the current model isn't communal. It's state capitalist. It's fascism. And giving fascism the force differential is not good for poor people, minorities, or anybody who is most negatively affected by fucking fascism. So how are all these people going to cry about democracy, and how it's dying, and how we need Biden in his big, glowering, dumb fucking face in front of his red lights, looking like a movie villain tyrant straight out of Man in the High Castle or Handmaid's Tale? Why is that okay? But it's not okay for the common person to own a gun to maybe protect from that. Maybe it's because in order for him to get what he wants, we have to forget how fascist he is, we have to forget the effects on the common person, and we have to forget that most, uh, like, mass disarmament has preceded some kind of democide or other form of tyranny. Why is America different? And is it even? Because I could point to the fact that, like, a thousand plus people are shot and killed on average by cops a year. That's by guns. Cops guns. Cops guns being used by cops to shoot common people. That's what those do. And that's what they do in the hands of the people you want to have that force differential advantaged to their position. It's fucking evil. It's fascist. And that's not even to account for all the people who are totally unarmed, and still treated like that. Why don't we talk about, you know, uh, fucking... <laughs> Eric Garner. Why don't we talk about George Floyd? Why don't we talk about Kelly Thomas? Why don't we talk about any of the number of people who were killed for even approaching a gun? Maybe because it's okay when the state does it. Maybe because it doesn't matter that people have to go to the black market to get the basic defense that a cop demands in order to be on the job. Maybe the reason a cop doesn't want to be disarmed is because of the same reason they shouldn't be trying to disarm us. Huh? But that's not acceptable to a uh, certain breed of uh, Democrats. And... Uh, compassionate conservatives who care about stopping crime because they're the same thing as fucking Biden and they love the cops and all of them do Biden is evil I, I, I posted this thing Biden disagrees that black lives matter ways Biden disagrees that black lives matter crime bill 1994 Drafted the Patriot Act, doubled counterinsurgency police funding, pushed for virus stimulus spending on cops. Yes, that's right. He said that we should spend fucking COVID stimulus money on police departments instead of, you know, 
the virus and helping people get back on their feet. Let's just give it to cops. That'll be all we need. He's DeSantis, and people treat him like he's Martin Luther fucking King. Not Junior, anyway. Already upped cop budget to $30 billion in 2022, wants $32 billion more now, and a $30 billion over a decade for the Safer America plan. I just thought I'd bring this up, you know? Because there are certain people who seem to be confused, and there are certain people who seem to think not only that Republicans aren't in favor of gun control when they consistently fucking are, and when, as far back as Reagan, Republicans were talking about how they wanted to take rifles away. And, you know, as uh, recently as Trump, we're saying, I like to take the guns first and do due process later. And maybe all of this was surrounding things like the Black Panthers. And people like Huey Newton saying, any unarmed people are slaves or subject to slavery at any point. In fact, let me finish that quote, because it's a very based quote and extremely red-pilled, and I think that you guys will be very woke. Um, <laughs> if the guns are taken out of the hands of the people, and only the pigs have guns, then it's off to the concentration camps, the gas chambers, or whatever the fascists in America come up with. One of the democratic rights of the United States, the Second Amendment to the Constitution, gives the people the right to bear arms. However, there is a greater right, the right of human dignity, that gives all men the right to defend themselves. So if you disagree with me, let's just say I'll use your language against you. And if you disagree with me, you're racist. And fascist. And maybe shut the fuck up and stop disarming poor people who can't afford the corruption necessary to maintain these arms past a ban. And stop enabling the criminal black market, which creates a significant amount of crimes by criminalizing things like gun ownership and drugs and all these things that the fascists love to criminalize. And maybe we should really just realize that the whole system is the problem, and not just the parts that like the bang bang pew pew and smash the fucking state.